Good evening, boys and girls. We're going to talk about planting with Lloyd. I just got done eating some roasted kookaburra. <laughs> hey, like that crummy Australian accent, right? Um, I want a uh, a hole in Cooper PD where I can uh, mine for opals, and then uh, people make their homes out of their mine holes. I'll just stay there. <laughs> Somebody buy me a plot in Cooper PD, Australia. Hey, I wanted to show you some uh, really cool stuff that uh, you're never going to see on YouTube or in any photography book. At least I've never seen it anyway. Uh, you know, I always grew up with uh, light modification tools. Here I have uh, five 26 strands of fiber optic. Now I have them velcroed and duct taped together. It only took me what, 10 seconds to tape them together. Sometimes I'll use one strand. This time I've got uh, all five strands. Cut to a certain section. You can actually buy this by the foot. It's like a dollar twenty a foot on eBay, depending on who you buy it from. Don't buy the really low quality fiber optics from China. So over here, you can see I have just these, just pointing dead on the end of an a. Uh, uh, yeah, the SP20. I there. I thought I had it on the SP23. Uh, on an SP22 uh, flash, and uh, I just have uh, two pieces of uh, duct tape. Yeah, it's really fancy, isn't it? Um, also blocking off the rest of the uh, of the strobe to prevent light leaks. Hold on, I'm getting to it. Have a little patience here. Okay, so I can remove this and take this apart in about five seconds. Okay. No big deal, right? Now what I'll do is I'll hook this uh, onto end of my SC29 flash cable, the uh, most unquestionable must-have accessory on planet Earth. Now obviously I can't TTL meter with this, but since I only use SC29s anymore anyway, I don't have the old SC, uh, uh, the old uh, SC17 cables. It doesn't matter, so I'm not worried about TTL metering, of course. But just to fire the flash, what I'll do is I have a longer one of these. This is only a three foot section. I got five strands of three foot section. Now these are, talk about artistry and painting with paint brushes, or painting with light here. So what I'll do is I'll stick this on an SC29, I'll stick the speed light in my pocket with my five foot section. Okay, so I've got the my camera, I've got my cable running to my S, uh, SP22, or uh, usually my SP26 is the one I've got modified with my five foot whip. I'll stick that in my pocket or I can stick it inside my shirt, whichever way is the most comfortable out of the way. And then what I'll do is I can do macro photography or I can paint with light and I can confine the beam with my hand like this. I can spread it out like this. So let's turn on our flash. Okay. Of course, getting light leaks. Let me turn off these overheads. And then let me show you a little trick. Here we go. So I'm doing macro photography at night like frogs and lizards or little insects sneak up on them. Now this, my flash is completely hidden in my pocket. I'm just illuminating with, and I can control the end of it for painting my object however I want. So I'm just using the ends of the fiber optic strands. So just like a paintbrush, Okay, hold on. This isn't the only trick. You know, have a little patience, okay? Just like the end of a paintbrush, you know, you have rounds and flats. I can change or modify this. I can either tape it that way or I hold it with my hands. I can make it confined like this. I could uh, actually uh, make a snoot with my hand like this. So I'm just illuminating like this object, for example, like this, a very small portion of an object. Um, also, the great use for these is use with translucent objects like this. I'll actually put like a black cloth right here. My speed light over here with my SC29 cable running to the top of my hot shoe and my camera. Okay, so this is off over here to the side. So, what I'm doing is... Let 
Now it's flashing so fast that you actually can't see it in the uh, the video recorder that I'm using, but let me turn the lights off and you might be able to see it a little better. All of that is being a the flash you're seeing is not from the flash, it's from the inside of the fiber optics in here, and the effects you get are absolutely fantastic. Um, one of the neatest shots that I took was a frog, and I used fiber optics underneath the leaf. It was a green tree frog, and it looked like stars underneath the leaf. And all I was using was a single. I got five strands here for maximum illumination. Like I said, I just got tape. It's nothing here. Let me let me show you. Let me turn it off. There's nothing here than two pieces of electrical tape. It's like, oh, you screwed with your flash. No, I haven't. Look. It only took me five seconds to put on there and take me five seconds if I were to go a lot faster anyway. Five seconds to remove. No residue left. Okay, that's it. How easy was that? Now what else can you use it for? Um, you do time exposure. Use a filtration. I've just got a Surefire flashlight here. Okay. One of the powerful ones, but it doesn't have to be powerful. I've got too many strands here for illumination, but Okay, so I'll actually use uh, one. I see I've got five strands of, uh, I think these are 26, uh, 20 strix, 26 strands uh, per cable here. What I'll do is uh, illumination like this, or I'll actually put a filter back here. I've got all sorts of filters. I mean, i got filters at the wazoo from uh, black and white and film days. Any color imaginable, so let's stick that on there. Oh, look, yellow. Oh, my God, that was so difficult. If you think that painting with light is any different than painting painting, then you're smoking crack! <laughs> because it's not! Your shutter becomes your illumination, especially on time exposures. So much fun. I love fiber optic cable. This stuff is cheap. Every photographer should actually have some light brushes like these. What do you mean light brushes? Just fiber optics. What else can you use them for? Um, I'm pretty sure I'm not the first person to think of it. I think someone else did it and I saw it God knows how many years ago. So I don't, I'm don't. i pretty sure I didn't come up with it. Uh, but I, uh, You can actually take a longer strand like this and fan it out behind someone's head. And what you do is uh, like take an 85 millimeter portrait headshot. Okay, this is someone's head. You'll actually fan them out, so you've got a much greater exposure in your fiber optics here, so you're able to fan them out behind someone's head. You'll illuminate with whatever color you want, and so since it's behind their head and you've, uh, you're taking the shot at f1.8 or f1.4, and you got nice bokeh lights, it looks like you know, you've got a starry, uh, you know. People wonder, you can still see um, the muslin backdrop behind them, but they'll wonder how you inserted these stars. Like, did you do that in Photoshop? No, I just used a strand of fiber optic cables. I hooked it to a flash. You can put a gel right here, like if you want blue lights, you know, blue gel. Gels are cheap! Go down to your art store. You know how cheap gels are? You just cut yourself out a little square. A little square will last you forever. It's not like you can't reuse it, for God's sakes. So incredibly handy. In terminal, uh, excuse me, I can't speak tonight. I've actually been a little bit sick today, so. Internal illumination of objects, and I'll actually move it around during a time exposure, like this. Hold on a second. Just gonna try to let you see. You can actually move these around and paint the object however you want and I love translucent objects the most fun in the world is most fun in the world for me is macro lens a translucent object and fiber optics okay translucent object plus fiber optics plus time exposure equals lots of fun or very beautiful photography anyway and uh, I'll just use a, a black piece of cloth underneath here to block off all that light and so what I'll do is I'll take a macro shot of fascinating, like uh, sand dollars, this is a sea urchin, and people wonder how you did it, and it'll all be blocked off down here. Or you could just paint it out in Photoshop, who gives a damn, right? I just could use black cloth. Thousands and thousands of uses for this stuff, and it's so cheap. You're talking about a buck fifty a foot, depending on uh, 
the size and the strand uh, per cable. I think this is 26 strand cable fiber optic. And uh, this is the stuff typically that makes the reject list for uh, fiber optic transmission lines because there's some flaw in it that's been detected, but it's perfectly fine for painting with light. So, I mean, incredibly useful. And how long did it take me to attach it to a speed light? I said, I'll hook an SC29 uh, flash cable to this, put that to my hot shoe, stick this in my pocket, I just use some duct tape, industrial duct tape, the black duct tape, the, uh, the black duct tape, by the way, tape it right here to my speed light. I'm able to take awesome, confined, it's all about light manipulation. The only thing that defines a photographer is compositional skills and light manipulation. And it doesn't come any better. You'd be like, well, I get a lot of overkill on my speed light when I'm trying to take macro photography. I only want to expose this little area instead of, like, boom, the whole thing is blown like a bomb. So what's the answer to that? Well, here's one answer right here. Boom. Con boom. Confinement. Confine it with your hand. Confine it by number of strands. Change the color. Endless possibilities. Just frigging endless. I don't think anybody else on YouTube or there's any books actually talking about the light manipulation like that. Fiber optics. Let me know and I'll give you a link to, you know, buy 10 feet of it. It's 10 feet of fun. I mean, what, what's your ultimate cost? I've got duct tape here, so that's two pennies worth of duct tape. You've already got the speed light. That's, this is an older speed light. Obviously, I have no TTL control on this, but I don't give a damn. I'm only interested in output and uh, actually amount of light. And I manipulate the amount of light, not by my speed light. Since I don't have any TTL control with the old SP23, SP22, it just is. Um, the other one's SP23 that I use this for. Because it's a lot smaller and it fits in the pocket better than the SP22, this one. I just confine it, uh, confine my light manipulation by either by hand or by number of strands or by position and proximity, of course, and by aperture. I mean, it's all about painting with light. And people are like, oh, it's all about shutter speed, it's all about. No, it's just, it's all about light manipulation. Your shutter, when it comes to. Uh, low light and uh, macro photography and time exposure, your shutter becomes really an irrelevancy. One of the first things people learn when they start taking time exposures is like they're worried about the shutter. Screw the shutter speed, okay? You, you set your ISO, you set your aperture, your, 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 uh, you get a lot of tighter aperture, you get more time to manipulate the painting of your light. Obviously, if you choose a wide aperture like 2.8 or f4 or whatnot, you've got a limited amount of time to paint before the whole object, your whole, your whole uh, photographic uh, subject becomes blown out. So, you know, stop down to f22 or f16. You'll quickly discover what it is, and that gives you a lot more time to paint and manipulate. And you'll be like, boom, okay, I need to adjust this in the next shot. And then within four or five shots, you've got it. And then uh, it'll be just a beautiful portfolio shot, you know, for your portfolio. And uh, this is, that's the fun time where shutter becomes irrelevant. You just turn the shutter on, you know, you got your remote trigger, just open it. Open your damn shutter or turn it to three seconds, turn it to four seconds. It's all about painting your shot and uh, it doesn't become about the shutter anymore. If it becomes about your aperture, it gives the amount of time you got for manipulating uh, the illumination of your subject. Um, but, you know, everything's manipulated through here. Number of strands, manipulation of the strands, confinement, distance. It's really very simple. I'm not, it's not hard at all. You think, oh, that's too difficult. No, it's not. I use duct tape, a speed light, and uh, $10 worth of fiber optic cable. So, anyway, uh, you should have fun with that. And uh, it's the most fun you can have for 10 bucks. Go on eBay and buy yourself a tip. Buy yourself a 10-foot section of fiber optic cable. I mean, you could really do a lot of neat stuff that will impress people just with some fiber optic paint brushes. And by paint, I mean light, of course. Anyway, thanks for watching.